Hello, welcome to Tech Dive AV Club. Today we're going to be talking about how to do keyframing and cropping. If you're new to Vegas, you might want to tech, check out my uh, new to Vegas video. I'll link up here, and I also got some Skillshare tutorials too. If you're interested in starting from scratch, if you're not new and you're wanting to just know how to keyframe, then stick around. This is a video for you. This is for Vegas Pro 16, but I also got a Movie Studios version coming out as well. So keyframing is something that you can do in a ton of places in uh, Vegas. So knowing how to do it is extremely important. So first, I want to show you an implementation of a keyframe. Uh, I have a video where I review the Nintendo Switch. And I have a little joke that goes on in the beginning. And uh, before I reveal the children in the joke... Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're going to be reviewing the Nintendo Switch just as soon as I can get my hands on it. Do you care if I see that? Just a minute. No, it's my turn. Well, I'll get to it as soon as it's my turn. So before I reveal the children, I, I want it to be close up on me. I didn't have another videographer there. I didn't uh, want to be doing crazy remote things. I just knew that I could do this in post. So I did. I did it using keyframes. This is the same shot. You can see it's the same clip. But here in the clip, it's pulled back and you can see everyone. And here in the clip, I'm concealing everyone by zooming in on myself. So to do that, I use keyframes. So first I'm going to go to Event Pan Crop. You can get there by right clicking and selecting Event Pan Crop. Or you can just hit Event Pan Crop. And then uh, this is my keyframes here I have. So if you're in Pro, there's masking keyframes. Ignore those. I have a masking tutorial if you would like to know how to do masking and masking keyframes. But right now you're worried about position keyframes. And here I have the position locked up tight. And then on this keyframe I have the position locked up tight. And on this keyframe I have it pulled back to everything. So let me show you. Right here down this line you can create keyframes over the time of the clip. So this is a, about a 14 and a half, 15 second long clip. At the beginning I have a keyframe. Let's say at 8 seconds I want a keyframe. I can add one here by clicking create keyframe and then I can get delete it by just clicking delete keyframe as long as it's highlighted so I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the keyframes and we'll remake it so what I want you to realize first is that this is the actual field of view that's what that F stands for this is what you can see and if you notice if I make it too big it puts black borders on everything because I have the field of view going way past the actual footage. If I have it going tighter, you can see more. Now, depending on the resolution of your camera, it depends on how crisp it's going to be and also the, code, uh, the uh, resolution you render out as as well. But, if I want to just kind of choke in on me in the corner, I can pick, my, pick a little spot right there where you just see me. Now that's just using crop and key frame, uh, cropping. Uh, to do the keyframes with it, let's say I want it to slowly come towards my face the entire time. I can go to the very end of the clip, create a new keyframe, and then make it even smaller so that way at the end of the clip it's even tighter on my face. So now if we watch the video footage, Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're going to be reviewing the Nintendo Switch just as soon as I can get my hands on it. Do you care if I see that? Just a minute. No, it's my turn. Well, I'll get to it as soon as it's my turn. So see, there it creates a very different effect, but throughout the keyframes, I have one keyframe where the position is clearly bigger, and then the, another keyframe where I make the pos position smaller. And it slowly, as long as you have two keyframes created with its difference, it'll slowly change between them. You can change the type of change here by clicking fast, slow, smooth, sharp. Let's try fast. Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're going to be reviewing the Nintendo Switch just as soon as I can get my hands on it. Do you care if I see that? Just a minute. No, it's my turn. Well, I'll get to it as soon as it's my turn. So the difference is very subtle, but you can change those subtle differences by right-clicking the attributes here. So if you want it to dance all around the screen, well, then you just need to make more keyframes. And we got to see, oh, so don't do what I just did. I just put a keyframe in masking. We don't want to do that. We want to keep it in position. Create a new keyframe here. And now let's say I want it to just zoom up here 
onto the junk right there in the middle. Now let's just see what happens here. Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're going to See now it's slowly the zooming to the like junk. Hands on it. Do you care? And it then after that, care if I see that? Just a minute. It'll start yeah, zooming back it. out. Well, I'll get to it as soon as it's to the final turn. keyframe I have. See? So you can see how this can be helpful, how it can move things around, animate things. So what if I wanted to do what I did at the beginning again? Well, I can delete I can delete these unnecessary keyframes. So I can have it go through here, and then you might have to experiment a little bit, but I know a few seconds in, about the time I turn my head, is when I want to reveal them. So I need to create another keyframe. Oop, don't do what I just did. Don't do it in the masking position. Make sure you do it in the position. Position. Uh, create another keyframe, and that keyframe will inherit the attributes of the last keyframe. If it doesn't, if the you know if you've got something messed up and you want this keyframe and this keyframe to be exactly the same, you can actually right-click on the first keyframe, hit copy, and then right-click on the second key, uh, keyframe and hit paste which I don't, didn't copy anything, and then that will put the exact position of the field of view to the exact spot. So these keyframes, nothing changes in between them, and that's good. What I'm doing is making sure that this stays the same, because at the next keyframe, that's when I want the change to happen. And then if I, I can just click this default 16 by 9 ratio, and it will go ahead and fill up the whole frame again. So now, and I, and I want this to be smooth. I'm going to go ahead and give it the smooth attribute there. So, watch this. Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive. Today we're going to be reviewing the Nintendo Switch just as soon as I can get my hands on it. Do you care if I see that? Just a minute. No, it's my turn. Well, I'll get to it as soon as it's my turn. So that's digital zooms. But now let's look at something else. Let's go somewhere else in the timeline. Let's grab a media. Let's go grab some media here solid color let's get uh, something let's just grab white and then I have a PNG make sure I got a video track right on top of it I got a PNG over here in my project media this PNG has no back so it's actually the tech dive logo but what's cool about it is I can move it around the screen because only the as a, at being a, a PNG with no back, it's 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 just a see-through uh, watermark. Really, I can turn it into a watermark if I want to, whatever I want to do. But I can actually animate this to seem like it moves around. You can do this to, like track something on somebody's face. You can do this to cover up something. You can do it to make something dance around the screen. You can, you can do a lot of manual tracking with this. There is a way to do not manual tracking, and that's with Bateser masking. It's a video effect right here. I'm going to do a more detailed tutorial about Bateser masking. It's quite, it's quite an uh, intricate thing to learn, and I'm preparing a more detailed tutorial about that. This is manual tracking and keyframing. So, go around here, see? You can just make it bigger, smaller, you can make it move around the screen. There's all sorts of options you can do with keyframing. So keyframing isn't just something you do with the event pan crop. Keyframing is something that exists all throughout Vegas. Because anywhere you see this clock and plus, you can click it, and then now you have a keyframe area. And so I can actually create another keyframe here. And then on this keyframe, I can change the color. So now anything I do to the settings up here will reflect in this keyframe. So if I change the color to pink, now watch this. Notice it slowly starts turning to the pink color I changed. So you can do that. You can create a strobe effect. You can have it change color at random times. You can even have things randomly highlight when you say things. For example, with uh, text. Let's go, oh, I said video effects. I need to go to media generators, titles, and text. You can see keyframing is how they've created all these presets up here with the flashing and the dropping words and stuff like that. It's a lot of work, and they've done that for you. One thing you can do is create your own custom animations because you can actually 
animate any one of these things down here. So when adding text to something, uh, not only can you animate the stuff behind the text or things like that, you can animate what happens to the text. So you can animate the background itself of the text. You can make it see-through, not see-through. You can make the text, honestly, you can make the text see-through, not see-through. And you can animate how see-through the text is. So I can make it not see-through, and then at the end of it, I can make it see-through. And then now, if we watch this text, See that? So this 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 clip loops, so the keyframe behind it loops, so that doesn't. That's this little notch means the clip is looping because I'm starting it over again, so the keyframes also start over, just a side note. But let me move this out of the way so you can see the full effect here. You can see it. Oh, but see, interesting. I have white on white, so you can't see it. And then there's a period of time where you can kind of see it, but it's becoming more see-through. So by the end of it, it's see-through, and you can see through it, so you can't see it. I can do the same thing just by making it a nasty yellow. So I can actually make it turn from white and slowly turn to yellow. Meanwhile, the background slowly turn into pink. So I'm making some horrible atrocities here, but you can imagine how you can do all sorts of interesting things with it. So tracking, line spacing, outline width, right? Like you can do all sorts of crazy things with this. You can recreate the Stranger Things logo. Uh, in fact, I might do a video recreating the Stranger Things logo. That might be fun. And then uh, let me know if you want to see that video. Also comment below if you want to see any tutorial. If you're like, I just need someone to teach me how to do blank, tell me and I will get to it. This is why I'm doing the keyframing tutorial. I'd done one a long time ago, but it's time to update it. But someone had asked me to do one. And so I'm doing one. And uh, But you can animate any of these things. Any of these things you see a clock by can be animated. And if it can be animated, then that is a ton of power. You can animate video effects. See, like uh, cookie cutter is a good one. You can animate the cookie cutter effect, right, where uh, the cookie cutter effect is, is could have its own tutorial in itself. But just, you know, this is an example of effects that can have things move or change something around it. I can animate that. I can animate the size. I can animate the borders. I can animate all this stuff, giving motion and life and breadth to things that you're doing. You can animate your film grain. You can animate your scan lines. You can animate this stuff. And that is extremely, extremely helpful. Because if, if just everything you're doing, keep an eye out for that little clock. Because if with a combination of keyframes and some persistence, you can make some really cool things. So that is keyframing with Vegas Pro 16. Again, if you're new to the software and you want to start from scratch, check out my Skillshare tutorials through my Skillshare link. That would help me out a lot. And uh, if you can also check out this channel. I have lots of stuff for beginners. If you're not new to, for the, to this stuff, I also have lots of more advanced things and camera tricks and production notes that uh, I'm videos I'm coming out with all the time, several videos a week. So uh, please subscribe if you're looking for more. Like if this video helped you out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.